Hello. My name is Alberto Cottica and I care about public policy. I think online conversation is a great way to make our governance smarter because you can address almost any problem by throwing an online community at it and have it analyze it from many different angles and hopefully find a solution. It's been done, but many people think this is not a scalable approach because as the communities grow, well, the conversation becomes impossible to follow. There are so many people on the internet, you just get lost. It's a valid argument. So I'm um, looking at it from the point of view of what happens in an actual online conversation. We're using data from Edge Riders, a project by the Council of Europe and the European Commission. Edge Riders is a distributed think tank. It's an attempt to build a proposal in crowdsourcing for reforming European youth policy. It lives on an online platform that, as of early July 2012, had 1,100 registered users, of which 230 active on the platform, with 450 mission reports that are like blog posts, and 3,300 comments. So we wanted to look at the relationships, at the conversation going on into Edge Riders. So we built a network in which users are represented by nodes and comments are represented by edges or links in the network. Here's how the network is built. Suppose Alice writes a mission report. Well, nothing happens because nobody's talking to her and so no edge is created. But now suppose Bob comments Alice's mission report. At this point, you create an, an edge from Bob to Alice. Now, in Edge Riders, comments are threaded, which means comments are commentable. And if Charlie replies to Bob's comment, then you create an edge from Charlie to Bob. And this is the way the network grows. Now, let's take a look at the network. It looks like this. So, in a sense, at the first glance, it seems like this conversation is really not scaling very well and it seems extremely chaotic. Some numeric indicators can confirm this because there is one single giant component to which everybody is connected. And the modularity index, which measures the, the way that a network can be decomposed in a topologically meaningful sense into subcomponents, is low and stays low throughout the life of this network. What that means is that while subcommunities do emerge, and you have seen them colored differently in the previous slide, well, they are nothing different from what you would expect in a random network. So there is no structure there. But that's not the whole story, of course, because there are a number of people who are there exactly to talk to everybody in the network and make sure they talk to each other. They are the members of the Edge Riders team. I know this because I was the director of the project and I manage the team myself. So what happens once you remove the team from the Edge Riders network? Let's see how the network evolved over time. So in November, Basically, what you see is just what we call active singletons. These are active users who, however, are only talking to the members of the team. This is fully consistent to the, the lore of uh, Web 2.0, as retold by Katharina Fake when she founded Flickr, and she said, you have to greet the first 10,000 users personally. Basically, she was using the company's personnel to welcome new users and interact with them in the user platform. Now, as the months go by, new conversations in peer-to-peer, -peer, which don't involve a team, start to happen. I call this the induced conversation. And notice that the, this conversation takes the form of what in network theory is called connected components, subsets of nodes that are connected to each other, but not to anybody else. Connected components multiply over time, and in February, something starts to happen, which is that a component which is much larger than the others appears and it starts to display some kind of internal structure. Some people within the component are more connected among them than they are connected to other people in the same component. And what happens in the following months is that this component keeps growing and you can see here in April on the left, uh, it actually reached out to one of the pre-existing islands uh, component and uh, 
englobated it and it keeps growing but this time it doesn't look so much like spaghetti it seems much more structured with people talking to certain people more than they talk to the rest of the whole network now as the number of active nodes grows it becomes quite difficult to see this with an naked eye but we can use metrics to help our intuition so here's what happened to the sub communities in the largest component of the components let's break it down so the number of components is simply the number of islands that uh, exist in the network one of the islands is, is very large and then there are other, others are all really really small but the real action is in the sub communities in the largest component which start to become significant in February and then they keep growing. So what you see is that the Edge Riders network, starting from no differentiation at all, is actually specializing quite a lot and sub dividing into sub-communities when you consider only the induced conversation dropping out the network team members. Let's look at the modularity values. The red uh, curve is the, is the overall modularity in the network. And you see now that it's quite high. It stays consistently well over 0 0.5 of, throughout the project, uh, except for the very beginning. And what you see in the yellow curve is the modularity in the largest giant component, which includes almost everyone. This starts low, but actually you can see signs of self-organization of that uh, giant component. It becomes uh, significant in February and it, it keeps growing for a while and then it kind of levels out but it stays again over 0 0.5 while the number of components recall from the last slide goes up. So what we are seeing is we are seeing a consistent specialization of the conversation in the network. So is the conversation scalable? On a driver it is. It is in two senses. One is, if you know the people, as I do, you can see that the conversation is organized around certain themes. For example, the light blue people on the right of the graph are people who are discussing about learning, peer-to-peer -peer learning, online universities, etc. The yellow people in the, in, the, in the top of the graph are the Occupy and Common Goods building uh, conversation. The pink people in the bottom left, well, they seem to be talking more about activism and democracy online. There are some Wikimedia people, etc. The other pink people on the right, on the other hand, they are the resilience people. They are talking about how to build resilient healthcare systems in times of crisis. They are talking about how to design currencies that won't crash and stuff like that. So, you see, we can see that the people are gathering around certain topics, as if they were campfires. And the other sense in which the conversation in a wider scale is that this stuff doesn't take place at the same time. There seems to be a shifting of the attention of the community from one topic to the other. If you recall the growth process, the colors didn't come all at the same time together, but they kind of were added in layers. And this can be managed by a community manager. This is all very preliminary, of course. But if it were confirmed by further observation, it would be an indication that conversation online does indeed scale by becoming more parallel and that we have a chance at making our governance much smarter by using the internet to reach out to very many, very diverse citizens. If you care about these matters or have some data to share or some experience that you want to talk about, please join my colleagues and myself at the Dragon Trainer Project, which you'll find, of course, online.